A vector can be easily converted to a matrix tree value by using the matrix from normal function, which expects a vector as the argument to define the z-axis of the matrix. For example, if we would call matrix from normal and pass a normalized z vector to it, the result would be the identity matrix. If we would pass a vector which is not normalized and is pointing at 45 degrees relative to the z, uh, world z axis, the result is a matrix where the other axes are not scaled correctly. In this case, the y axis is longer than 1.0. If you would like to have a correctly normalized matrix, we would have to pass a normal vector to it. In this case, as you would expect, the, mat uh, the matrix has correct values for X, Y, and Z, the length of all the rows of this new matrix would be 1.0. As we can see, row 1, row 2, and row 3 of this matrix are now 1.0. We can use this method to scatter objects on the surface of another object by placing a copy or instance on every single vertex of the distribution surface and aligning this clone to the vertex normal using the matrix from normal method. Let's create a rather big teapot and the small one. The second small one is going to be scattered on the surface of the big one. And let's start a new script where the target variable is going to contain the teapot 01, the source variable we contain the teapot 02. We're going to snapshot a copy of the mesh of the target. Snapshot as mesh creates a new tri mesh value in memory which contains the state of the object in world space. That means after all the object trans modifications the object transformations in world space and also all the space warps that might be assigned in world space. This means that getting a vertex from this mesh is always going to return world coordinates and not local object coordinates. Now we can loop for every vertex from one to the mesh number of vert vertices in the mesh by one that means ev take every single vertex we could later change the the step to place an object on every second vertex and so on and then for every vertex let's create an instance the new object is equal to instance of the source We'll set the name of this new clone to a unique name. Using the original name of the source and adding the suffix clone to it. At this point, we could add a delete dollar sign any object that has clone in its name, which means that we can execute the code multiple times and always delete the previous clones before creating new ones. Now, we can set the transformation matrix of this new clone 